From St Mary's Hitchin, the reading for Good Friday is from the Gospel of John, chapters 18 and 19. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, you're not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple. 
I've said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. Then Anna sent him, bound, to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You're not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in response, Not this man, but Barabbas. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! They said, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. From then on, Pilate tried to release Jesus. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, 
we have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, saying to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfil the scripture, I am thirsty. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. When the soldiers came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled none of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was disciple of Jesus, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
We are inundated with words at the moment. The endless news cycle, the daily briefings from Downing Street, the messages we read on Twitter and Facebook. Our Gospel reading contains a lot of words too. Jesus' words, Peter's words, the police's words, Pilate's words, the words of the crowd, the words of the chief priests. We all know the power of words, especially at the moment. Words that cause fear, words we want to share with loved ones. We are thankful, of course, for the wonders of technology that enable us to share words and perhaps images, even if we cannot meet in person. Today we stand with one whose bones were broken and words of derision, of taunting, were used against him. The eternal word of God is crucified. The one whose words and actions have revealed the true nature of God is put to death. The one who has consoled and challenged in equal measure, is silenced, or so they think. Today isn't really a day for words, certainly not from me, as we stand together at the foot of the cross, even though we are at home, and renew our love and devotion to the crucified one. But it is his words, his seven last words that I want to encourage you to reflect on this Good Friday. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgiveness is at the heart of Jesus' teaching about God and how we should relate to each other from the parable of the prodigal son to the Lord's Prayer. When our human instinct is to cry out at the wrong that is done to us and to tread the bitter path of revenge and retribution, Jesus says, forgive. In this, Jesus reveals the meaning of the love of God. Hate God, deride him, crucify him, but he cannot but be true to his own nature of forgiving love. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, says the thief, and it is met with Jesus' response, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Paradise, the Persian word for a garden, the place where things grow, where people grow. The thief grew in his spirituality at such a terrible moment for him. And we can grow in our spirituality at this terrible time. As the thief gasped for his last breaths, and the parallels with the present time are stark. He could see that Jesus, who appeared so serene and victorious in death, could not be wrong. Woman, he says to Mary, his mother, here is your son. And to John, he says, here is your mother, Mary. Two people so dear to Jesus, his mother and the beloved disciple John. At the foot of the cross is being formed a new community, the church, a new sonship, a new motherhood. The blood relationship isn't everything, and a greater relationship, one freely and lovingly entered into, is born. And we're seeing so much of that 
uh, that so much of those good relationships at the moment uh, between people who are not necessarily of the same bloodline or family but looking out for one another in a new way. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Words of a Jewish prayer Jesus would have known by heart. It is not, in the end, a psalm of despair. But Christ, who at this point feels abandoned, alone and desolate, still calls upon his Father. It's been the testimony of so many who have known this darkness in physical or spiritual suffering that afterwards they have come to see that even in the darkest times God has been present with them though they didn't always know it at the time. Let us hold in our prayers all those who feel abandoned especially those suffering on wards in our hospitals who feel forsaken. I thirst. Jesus has a very human need in the long drawn out torture of execution by crucifixion. A reminder to us that on Good Friday we reflect on a human being a real human being, torn apart, broken in the cruelest way. Yes, it is accomplished. The one who is so seemingly powerless is in command. It's not Jesus saying, that's it, I'm dying. It's Jesus saying that salvation has been wrought. He has shown what it means to be fully human. He has revealed the true nature of the Father. He has rebuilt the bridge between God and humanity. Now he offers his life back to the Father. The work of saving humankind is complete. Finally, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Every Jewish child would have known the psalm words, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But Jesus adds his own word, Abba, Father, Daddy. Jesus' relationship with the Father is of extraordinary intensity and its directness is revealed on the cross. But today isn't a day for philosophy or theology, for words and ideas, for quotes and poems especially at the moment as we are inundated by words. But today is a day to stand silently in devotion at the foot of the cross, spiritually, wherever we are. May we be people who forgive, even when it feels impossible, who grow like beautiful plants in the garden of paradise, who form a community not by blood but by love and service. May we know, especially at this time and in our saddest moments and unbearable pain, that we are not forsaken, that Jesus has suffered for us and thirsted for us. In him, it is accomplished for all people and for all times. Amen.